one is the one at the back. If you want to just join us, inshallah, on the front. Zakumullah <clears> khairan. <throat> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين على من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين. فريجة دري سيسس الدانسز. دري سيسس دري سيسس دانسز. كارش. إز ماك. Tonight's class is going to be the fruits of the biography of the Prophet وسلم, in which we take the Prophet of Allah as a role model in his kindness and his gentleness. And we're going to be talking about, inshallah, the gentleness of the Prophet وسلم, to the women. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So a role model for you to follow, the Prophet of Allah. And also Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we sent you not except to be a mercy to mankind. The enemies of Islam, whether in the past or in the present time, and could be as well in the future, always accuse Islam of being a terrorist, unpeaceful, and the prophet of Islam is the prophet of terrorism, and they are tyrant, not only that, we are harsh and tyrant towards the children and the women. This is an accusation which we know it. On top of that, that we beat up our children, we beat up our wives, and all of those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about these people who accuse Islam unjustly. They want to distinguish or put off the light of Allah, the guidance of Allah, the deen of Allah, that is the deen that Allah wanted to adopt, which is Islam, with their mouths. So, but Allah refuses. Except that he will complete his guidance, complete his religion. Even if the disbelievers who dislike that. Allah Azza wa Jal said, It is him who had sent his messenger to all mankind in order to make the religion to supersede all other religions, even if that is not what the mushrikeen, the kuffar, wants. Despite of the mushrikeen wish, the religion of Islam will supersede. That's the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is us we have to really make sure that we are in the caravan, not to leave the caravan going and are on our own. So the opposite is the correct thing regarding the deen. Our deen is peaceful. Our deen is merciful. Our deen is kind. Our deen is gentle. Our deen is kind to all categories of people. And we're going to see that inshallah through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to him, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنْ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ From the mercy of Allah that you have, you're being kind and lenient to, to them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَرِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ If you to be harsh, harsh in your heart, they will leave you. Who are they going to leave you? The companions. So if the Prophet of Allah is to be harsh, he's a Prophet of Allah. Can you just ask the person please to, because I, I could hear this talk here, Juan. And yeah, it's not correct. Either we close the door or... So if it's to be harsh, then the harshness will make the people who are the best of the generation after the prophets to leave the prophet himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he says to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tolerate, pardon them, lahum, and also seek forgiveness on their behalf, الأمر, and consult them in their affairs, in the affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves kindness and gentleness in all the affairs. And that is why Allah azza wa jalla, he made Ar-Rafiq to be one of his names. 
and also one of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, a rifq. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah rafiq. Allah is rafiq. That means one of his names. Yuhibbu rifq. And he loves gentleness, kindness. Qal, Inna Allah rafiq. Yuhibbu rifq. Allah is to be rafiq and he is to love the rifq. Wa yu'ti ala rifq ma la yu'ti ala l'umf. And he will give with the rifq, with the gentleness, which he doesn't give and provide with harshness. So if you want to achieve a specific matter, there's two ways, there's two ways of doing it. Unlike even the trade market. <laughs> uh, so if you want to, uh, where are we going? So if you want to, to achieve something, there's two ways, either harshness, or you can achieve it through gentleness. Allah will make your <coughs> way through gentleness to achieve more than what you achieve with harshness. So your son, you want to discipline him. Two ways. Your wife, you want to discipline us. Two ways. Your friend, you want to discipline him. Two ways. Your students, you want to discipline them. Two ways. Your son, your daughter, all that. <coughs> Allah, I'm Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was Rafiq. Rahim, gentle. And he was also, there's no electric by the way, this one. It's possible. And he was also merciful in everything. Let's just see. In Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim, I think what is, what is connected somewhere. Yeah. Ah, khalas, I just pressed the red button. <laughs> So, right. so we find in Sahih al-Bukhari al-Muslim on the authority of Malik ibn al-Huwayt, radiyallahu anhu, he said, I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam along with some of my people. We stayed with the Prophet of Allah for 20 nights. He was so merciful to us, so kind to us, so gentle to us. And when he saw that we are looking forward to go back to our families, so he said to us, go back to your family. And that is, stay within them. And and teach them and command them. And pray, one narration says, like I pray, another narration says, Sallu kada wa kada, pray such and such and such and such prayer. And then he said, and this is something for the adults, the ones who is the master of the house, the father, the husband, to do the following of this family. قال, الصلاة, when the prayer time is on, let one of you, one of the family, to make the adhan. قال, and let the one who is the eldest is to lead you in the prayer. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had commanded us to be very kind and gentle in all our affairs. So the Prophet of Allah said, In the rifqa la yakunu fi shayin illa zana, wa ma yunza'u rifqa min shayin illa shayin. The rifq, the kindness, will not be there, except it will be beautify the matter. And if it's been to pull away, to be pulled away, then it will make it ugly. Can anybody tell me this hadith is being said for another character, which we have discussed here? What is that? Yes? You know, what is the character that looks like this character, which is a gentleness? That is equivalent to this hadith. It's exactly the same hadith. Well, instead of putting rift, there's another word for it. We talked about it. Huh? Huh? No, hastiness. Now, nah. I'm talking about good manner, good manner. The good manner. Prophet sallallahu he said, "Ma kana rifqu bi shay'in illa zana, wa ma nuzi'a rifqu bi shay'in illa shana." Just put the word rifq and take it away. Put something else. No, we've just discussed it, yeah. Where is the students of knowledge sitting in front of me? And okay, it's open for the ones on the panel here. Yalla, Ikhwan, yalla. Got here twenty. Yalla, Ikhwan. Anybody would like to put his hands up from the a manner that we discussed a long time ago? Subhanallah. With the same hadith. Huh? So what does say? Huh? Haram? Haram. Karam, karam. Speak in English. 
هو دي سيكس حرام زي <تصفيق> جنروسيتي كرم نو زي سيد حرام لا كرام كرم از ديفرنت فروم كرام طيب شيك وي هاف ا هاند اب يس جو اون زهره زهره ذس وان ديفرنت نعم if you feel that to to speak please yeah نعم الحياء well done الحياء ما شاء الله sister she knows and all the men are asleep no wonder why they deserve this talk tonight being gentle to the women all of you men didn't know anything sister from I don't know I heard about this sister ما شاء الله بها she says الحياء الحياء exactly the same thing prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that Allah will give with the حياء which he doesn't give with that without it so your حياء Allah will achieve things with it so الرفق prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He had said to his family, which is the family of Malik ibn Huayrif, because he was a gentle to go to a family and teach them, and teach them and teach them the prayer. And that's from his gentleness, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also the Prophet of Allah, he said, he who does uh, be or becomes a leader or a commander uh, of some group, and then he's be harsh onto them, may Allah make harshness on him. So, man waliya, he who does, be become, min amri ummati shay'a, to be leader of anything. And he is to be harsh, then Allah's Messenger, he made a supplication, fashquq alayhi, may Allah make it hard on him. He made it hard to the people, may Allah make it hard on him. And he who does, lead some people, and he was gentle with them, O oh Lord, be gentle with him. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he was being given his portion from the gentleness from the rifq, then he's given his portion from the khayr. And he was being deprived from his portion of gentleness, he's being deprived from the khayr. Khayr means good. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, and listen to this hadith, who's been deprived from gentleness, he's been deprived from all types of khayr. Man hurima al-rifq faqad hurima al-khayr kullu. All good is being deprived from it. If you're not gentle, if your person is just harsh, talk loud, speak against the people. Assalamu alaikum, he starts shouting at him. No gentleness. Prophet Sallallahu with Aisha. Aisha radiallahu anha. She is in the house. Jews come to say salam to the Prophet. She's behind the screen, like a, say a curtain. And these Jews are going to leave. They left. They said, Assalamu alaikum. Salam sounds like salam, but it's not salam, it means death. Or let your time be boring, but it's actually death. Salam means death upon you to the Prophet. Prophet of Allah. So they are hoping that the Prophet of Allah would not be able to distinguish whether he had said salam or salam. Sounds the same. So he said the Prophet, and upon you. Second one, salam wa an upon you, wa alaik. Salam wa alaik wa alaik. This is the repeat. Aisha says behind, she is being boiling. It's a prophet of Allah on top of that, her husband. She can't take that somebody swearing at her husband. So from behind, when you left, you, death upon you, you, the brothers of monkeys and pigs, may Allah have mercy, a curse upon you, and all of them, bam, 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 bam. Didn't stop. La'anakum <laughs> Allah, may Allah curse you. She couldn't take it because she could hear it, what they say to the prophet. So the Prophet ﷺ addresses Aisha. He says, Mahlan ya Aisha. Take it easy, Aisha. Aliki bi rifq. Take gentleness. Wallahi, nobody would hold himself to be a gentle in such cases. No way. Regardless whom you are. Somebody saying death upon you. And you sending a little smile to him. <laughs> and you know that he is your enemy. And he's plotting against you. And you're going to hold yourself. Subhanallah. Prophet ﷺ, he says, and upon you. So he said, Mahlan ya Aisha, alayki birat. Take it easy, Aisha. Hold on to gentleness. She said to the messenger of Allah, did you hear what they said? That means I'm justified. What I just said is nothing compared to what they said to you. He said, yes. Did you hear my reply upon them? For verily, Allah responds to my supplication against them, and he will not respond to their supplication against me. So when they said, death upon you, it will not be responded to. But when I said, and upon you, it will be responded to as well. From the Prophet. So here the dua of the Prophet will be accepted, but the dua of the Jews 
who had said this, it will not be accepted. Ya Aisha, irfiqi. O Aisha, be gentle. Farifku lam yakun fi shay'in illa zana. Wa lam yunza' min shay'in illa shana. So this is the rif that we need to be holding on. Holding on. And we're going to have more examples. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a rafiq. With the old, with the young, with the children, with the male, with the female. He was rafiq with the rich, with the poor, with the good, with the nasty, with the person, with everybody, with men, with women. And we're going to see, inshallah, is rifq, even with the haywa, with the animal. We're going to talk about his gentleness with animals maybe next week, inshallah. So his gentleness to the women. In the women, if we see in the history, pre-Islam, what happened to her? She's been deprived from inheritance. In the Arabs are talking about, within the Arab community. She's been deprived from her inheritance. Well, not too far ago. In, in, in here, in, in the West as well, a long time ago, she's been deprived from her name. If she marries to somebody, a male, she loses her name. So if she's Samantha married to Mr. John, she will be called Samantha John. True or not? Not her own family. She's been ripped off from her family. Just recently, they started to make two names now, the, ma the male and the husband name and the wife name. But before, before it was just the women's name, the, the man's name. She's been deprived the women, she was not allowed even, you remember, to elect. And they, they, they just made like this these days. Inheritance. She was deprived from it at the time of the Jahiliyyah. Not only that. It was disgrace for a man to have a woman. A female daughter. Disgrace. If he hears his wife that she's giving deliver, deliver the baby of a girl, he will just put his head down. He can't raise it up with the community. Shame. Some of them, they will kill her. Called Wa'dul Banat. That was the case at the time of the Jahiliyyah. Well, Iyadu Billah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah An-Nahl, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى And if one of them to be given the glad tiding that his wife, she had brought a girl, a daughter. She delivered a girl. <coughs> what happens? وَظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدَّ وَهُوَ كَذِيمٌ His face will turn into dark. And he will be enraged. And enraged. قَلْ يَتَوَارَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءٍ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ he will hide from the people because of the glad tide, because of the time he's been given, that he has a daughter. Is he going to hold it while he is in disgrace? That's what he used to do. He used to kill and put it in the dust. <coughs> the women in the West, when she is young, children, there's children abuse. Have you heard about the children abuse? Girl and boys. That's why I have socials. So she's why? To protect those children from these aggressive, horrible, terrorist parents. You've heard about stories about parents torturing their children and the court taking the child from those family. Yes, it happens sometimes in the Muslim family, but the percentage is nothing compared to the West Yahwani. <coughs> you have single parents, single father, single mother. Family is broken into pieces. And when she is to become an adult, the scale, she becomes a goods to be sold. So they use her for advertising. One of the advertisements somebody told me is to be here as a Coke. So you drink Coke, you become slim. So what do they do? They put a Coke and then a woman who is almost naked drinking it. And she's slim. She is, you know, like this and all of that. But actually, if you drink coke, you become fat. That's the truth. But so she used in that. So when you, when you see the coke, you're not looking at the coke. You look at the one holding the coke. So she becomes, and it's called freedom, something to be used as for sexual objects. And when she becomes a mother, either she's a single mother or with a husband, but soon as she gets old, she's dumped in what care houses. True or not? Yeah, they put in the care house. Tell me who's that son or that daughter. They will take care of their family. Very few. They'll dump them there. Once in a while, they pay them a visit. They made a day for them. It's called the day of the mother. Yes? Eid, Eid al-Um. It's like we have a festival of Christmas, a festival of the Um. Why? Do you know why? Because they, because they could see that the people forgot their mothers. 
So let us just make one day in the year, at least remember the mother. And unfortunately, the Muslims, they follow the same steps. We honor our mother every day, ya akhi. It's not one day in the mother, subhanAllah, what an idiot Muslim person to carry a bunch of flour on the day of the mother and go and give it to his mother. His mother will say, what, just this day and that's it? We are to be righteous, our mother, as we're going to see how Islam treats the mothers in a minute, inshallah. So, the Muslim woman, how did she have her honor? We will talk about it when they were children, when they were adults, when they were mothers, when they were wives. So with children with their parents, <coughs> the girl, when she grows up, she becomes a, a wife of their husband, and she have children, she will be with her children. When they are children and becomes adults in that stage, Islam had, number one, prohibited the killing of the daughters. As soon as he came, it was a, a fashion. It was something to be practiced by the people of Quraysh. So Islam, he had made it prohibited to kill the women, regardless of your excuse. And not only that, he made ihsan to those girls is to be the reason for you to enter paradise and to be saved from the hellfire. Prophet Sallallahu he said, he who does, support two girls just two girls until they become an adult on the day of resurrection he will come me and him like that this hadith looks like the what me and the what process he said and the what like this anybody is that i can't hear you Sheikh. the line is louder than you orphan yes the orphan so me and the orphan like this so Prophet he said, me and the one who looks after two daughters until they grow, they become an adult like this. With the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he was doing. Prophet of Allah Sallallahu he said, if any person lives to see his two daughters and he is to be kind to them, they will accompany him to Jannah. He who has been uh, tested with having many daughters, then he is to be good to them, they will be for him a barrier from hellfire. This is a story which is, I have heard it from the Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, the son of Abdul Muhsin Al Abad, both are scholars, and he's still alive. He says, a person who told him a story of somebody whom he knows. And that person who told him the story, he died. He said that someone had five daughters. Every time his wife gets pregnant, she brings what? A daughter. He became sort of not happy and subtle. What is this? Daughter's daughter. You want a son? And he showed it to you know his wife. She's like his wife, she's in control. Uh, son, male or female. She can't control that. But he showed that, you know, and he just started telling her, yeah, you, you only can bring only just girls, is it? Is it only that can deliver? You only deliver girls. Started calling her names and, you know, you're just delivering, that's it, daughters, no sons. You're not even capable of bringing a son. Look at that. She got pregnant. She brought the sixth one. Okay. He got so enraged now. And this is a true story, according to the jail. So he threatened her. That's it. If you bring me another girl, I'm going to divorce you. Another wife. What's that got to do with her? Subhanallah. She gets pregnant, the seventh. Now he is so enraged and he said, That's it. If that seventh girl is to be a daughter, I am divorcing you. You're finished. Just before the delivery, he has a dream. And scholars, they say the dream, sometimes they come either. <clears throat> as a prophet from Allah Azza wa or from the shaitan or from something that the people do during the day they will dream about it during the night but what is from Allah as well it could be a glad tiny or it could be as well warning Bishara or Nidara so the prophet saw, uh, so the, uh, the man when he slept he saw the following day that the day of resurrection took place and the people has been judged 
and he was destined to hell. So the angel took him to hell. They went to the first gate. They want to throw him to hell. He found one of his daughters. She's putting her arms like that. No entrance. So they took him to the second gate. Another daughter putting her hands like that, her arms. Third gate, fourth gate. How many gates? How far has got? Seven gates. Sixth gate. Seventh gate is no daughter. They threw him there. He just woke up. He was so scared. I want a daughter. <laughs> Change his mind. <laughs> Six, so it, it, this man woke up now. As a Muslim, we should never be unhappy if we have been told that our wife delivered a girl. Never ever. Just like we are happy when we have a male, we should be happy as well. What? The female. Every one of them is a blessing from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even some of the scholars said it's the best for the two couple to bring first girl and then the boy. Why? Because they said, girl first, she's soft. When the boy comes after that, the boy will adopt the softness of the girl. He becomes what? Gentle. Okay? So I'm not saying, oh, tell your wife now, be careful. First boy, first child is to be a girl. Because <laughs> the sheikh said it's a girl. No, no, no. I'm saying the scholars say, if it's a girl, Usually the boy will follow because he's a what? He's younger than the girl, the sister of his. Um, Yaqub, one of the great scholars of the third century, Yaqub ibn Bukhtan. He's a, a student and a friend of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. He said, I had seven daughters. Every time I have a daughter, I go to Imam Ahmad. So Imam Ahmad tells me, Abu Abdullah, Said, Ya Aba Yusuf, which is the kunya of Yaqub ibn Muqtan. Ya Aba Yusuf, the prophets, they used to be fathers of girls. Every time he tells me that, I will be confident, confident with this. The prophet used to be what? Fathers of girls. Prophet Allah, how many girls he had? Four. Four daughters. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the prophets used to be fathers of girls. That used to comfort him. The sunnah of aqiqah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you produce a girl, if you're so produced, if you, your wife, she brings and delivers a baby girl, then you are, you slaughter what? She, to celebrate. Haqiqah. On the seventh day or the 14th or the 21st. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, as in his kindness to the girls when they are young, when they're born, is that he had commanded us to be just and fair between them. Between them and the, their brothers, the males, in everything. So he said, Allah, Prophet said, Fear Allah and be just in the givings to your children. Be just between your children when you give them a giving. Be just. When you die, your daughter will take, yes, half of the share of the boy. But when you're alive, both take what? Say. So if you had your child who was a boy, grown up, he became 18, and you decided to bring him a car, then when she becomes the girl 18 and able to drive as well, to go her driving license, to give her as well a car. Don't say, well, she has to have half a car. Now that's when you die. And I'm saying this, don't lie, but this is adopted by respected scholars. I said controversial, but this is the correct opinion because based upon Hadith and Nu'man ibn Bashir, Umar al-Bashir is a child when he's telling us, he, he remembers when he was a child, that his, wife, his mother, the wife of her, his father, Bashir, she used to argue with her, you know, tell him, you have to specify my son with something. Give him something. And uh, her, his father, it looks like he was married to more than one wife, so that he's got other children as well. But she wanted... <coughs> Her child just want to be distinguished with such a giving. <coughs> After one year, nagging, nagging on him, one year, he accepted to give either it is a slave or an orchard, both his narrations. So she said, no, no, no. I will not accept until you go and make the property well as a witness. Number one, to make sure it's halal or not. Number two, 
you're not going to go back onto your, onto your promise. <coughs> so he goes, holding an normal, he says, remember, I was on top of the shoulders of my father. Come to the Prophet He says, Messenger of Allah, I want you to be a witness that I have, and he's fought into a normal. For I have given, granted my child here, an orchard or a slave as a court, according to the narration. So the Prophet he said, do you have other children? He said, yes, my son. Did you give him the same? Regardless of the age. He gave him the same or children. Did you give him the same? <coughs> and he said, no, my son. He said, this doesn't work. I cannot be a witness for injustice. Let somebody else be a witness, not myself. Do you want them to be just and equal in being dutiful to you, in being righteous to you? He said, yes, my son. He said, then be as well just in the way that you give them. So you gave one, and you deprived the adult from that orchard. The adult's going to be having some sort of hatred towards you. Why did you give that little boy you didn't give me? I will split the brothers. Some of them they will give because he's very nice to me. This son, mashallah, is a good one. I give him more. And then this one is disappearing. I don't give him. Subhanallah. So what is it going to do? It's going to increase the disobedience of that disobedient. Shaykh al said, if you want to give more, it's actually you give the disobedience more. Because you're getting justified. You get to the disobedience, not because you want to specify him, but you want to bring him what? To the good. Just like you give one of your children because he's poor. And all the rest are not poor. So you give this one to bring him out of the poverty. So you bring this one out of what? Disobedience. Not to give the one who is more, mashallah, obedient to you, to make the disobedience. See, look, I, I, I was right when I hated you, father. No, you are unjust. So the Prophet he commanded for us to be just when we give the girls. Also, Prophet of Allah and Islam made it as well incumbent upon the parents to choose the right name for the girl and to choose the right husband when they grow up. You can't just give your girl to anybody. You have to scrutinize and make sure that this is <coughs> the fit husband. Of course, of course, with her approval. Okay, it's not just go to the market. Ah, he nice. Come on, bring this your husband. It's not shopping on the market, not shopping online. You have to mash up. This is your, your task as a father and a parent to go and check the mother. She will go to the family and check of these people. You're giving your you're giving your jewel to these people. And of course, that is, of course, if your daughter let you to do so. Unfortunately, these days, the girl she drives all the family to do something that all the family are refusing to do so, but. So if it is the case, then I would say to you, take it as much as easy as possible and let your girl to know the facts and be on the side of your girl, not to add on to the, uh, the drama and to, to go and just let your girl know. You, you just chose it and I'm going to disown you. Not correct, Akhi. Rifq, rifq. Maybe she, one day she will realize that she'll go back to you. It could be too late. Maybe he had married her, maybe he had made children with her, but at least you'll be with her. You have to be the backbone for her. When they are wives, Islam also looked up to them. He had Prophet Sallam given an admonishing to us that they are weak. They're weak physically. Everything they're weak. Can, anybody can take advantage of them. So the Prophet Sallam, he said, Take care of the women. Make sure that they are upon, they are being cared for. For verily, the woman, she is created from a bila, the rib. And the most crooked rib is the one which is at the top. If you want to go and straighten it, you will break it. So that means breaking it up, you're going to divorce it. And if you left it, it will be, stay as crooked as it is. So be good with the woman. So how do you interpret this hadith? Basically, this is the man, imagine, and this is the woman. It's made from the bone straight, and she's made from what? Crooked bone. So. There's a gap. I want to live with her. So if I try to pull this rib to be straight like me, I will break it. That means what? Divorce. So what's the solution? You bend with her. <laughs> you bend with her. That's just called stalso bin saykhara. Take it easy. Because sometimes uh, they come up with the most hilarious ideas. You say, mashallah, tabarakallah. Don't take it. You have to be good to the woman. And they are just like you are, not as kind as her to the children. She is more kind to the children. 
She's more merciful to the children. You're a harsh as a man. It's a male. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded us through the Prophet وسلم, the men especially, to fear Allah regarding the women. In the, the well, so they called the farewell hajj, Prophet وسلم addressed the people in which he had said, Fear Allah regarding the womb. For when you have taken them with the word of Allah and you made their private part to be halal to you with the word of Allah. So you have a right upon them that they will not let anyone to go on your bed whom you dislike. If they did this, then what? Break their bones? No, discipline them. But you should not really beat them up as a some of the beat them up the word beat them up doesn't really doesn't really discipline them is a better word discipline them because beating up you could break the bones and punch and all it's not loud it's not punching back jeez prophet sallallahu forbade at that time they used to whip the women lash them prophet why one of you is this slash flogging or lashing whipping his wife, just like he whips his, you know, the slaves. And then at the end of the day, he goes and make what? Sexual intercourse with her. So after you whip her, then at the, during the night, you go and enjoy yourself with her. What type of person you are? Prophet Sallallahu he said, one day, don't beat, don't hit the women whatsoever, regardless. Don't hit them. So the women got no stronger. <laughs> started having a bigger word on the men and daring them and became like oofs huh? and Umar Khattab on the behalf of the men he said messenger of Allah you know since messenger of Allah you forbade us from hitting them they started becoming like lions onto us yeah, like they, are the, they are the men we are the women now so the Prophet he said okay hit them they started beating. When they did that, they did that, of course, overboard. Prophet Salami just addressed the people. He said, tonight, 70 women, it's a protest. 70 women came to complain about those people who beat their wives. 70 women is a lot to come to a house. They came to the... 70 women had came and circumvent the house of, the, of myself. Why? Because they're complaining. The men are beating them up, beating them, beating us up. So the Prophet he said, for buddy, those who does so, he's not from the best of the people. They're not good. They're not good. The good ones will not do that. So discipline the women is not the way, it is not a beat or a hit that would leave a mark. No. And it's not allowed onto a face. So if a person did to his wife like that, like that, in Islam it's allowed. But if he did that same thing to the, to the face, it's not allowed. And if he did it really hard and left a mark, it's not allowed. It's the beating is actually to show that I have given up on communication by words. You becoming now lower than that, that's what you deserve. That's what it is. So it's not punching, breaking, not going to tooth or an eye. That's not really correct. Remember that you are strong. The women are always, always weak. It is not correct. I'm sure that the women, they do that to their husband as well. <laughs> and discipline is only for something they did haram, indeed, something wrong. It's not for revenge. I'm going to beat her up because she did this. This is like revenge. This is an enmity, animosity. This is not really to do with the, I want to make sure that she is praying. Haram, I've been talking to her. Come on, woman, wake up. You have to pray. Um, also, Islam made the right of the woman is to be just similar to the right of the man. Just like there's a right of the woman for you, there is a right for the woman the right for the right of the man on her is the right for the woman on you exactly the same. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Walahunna mithul ladi alihin bil ma'ruf. Walahunna mithul ladi alihin. 
for them the same rights like the, the, the obligations upon them. Bil ma'roof in good, in reasoning. So if she can't, for example, ask you for a, a car and you can't afford it, she can't ask you for a big house and you can't afford it. Bil ma'roof, she's got her rights. One man came to the Prophet and he said, Messenger of Allah, what is the right of a woman or her husband? He said, the Prophet of Allah, that is if he's to eat, he will feed her. So whatever food you eat, you feed her. Don't go on hide in restaurants and eat kebab and give her the dal and lentil without the meat. You eat the kebab, you feed a kebab. There's some people that do that. They go with their friends and they eat the best of food and their wives are left with nothing, no meat, nothing. You clothe her from what you clothe yourself. So you clothe her the same thing. You clothe, mashallah, you get nice clothes, you buy the same thing, clothes closer. Same thing. And do not beat the face at all. Do not as well rebuke her in a way to make her feel insignificant, to demean her, to despise her, to do what's the word for it. You know, you are a piece of what you are a piece of, and then you start to see you spit on her. That's not allowed. That's not allowed. That is allowed, but spitting is not allowed. It's not allowed in Islam. That will create more hatred between both of the couple. And if he wants to discipline her regarding the sexual fact, then he would detach himself on the bed, in the bedroom. Not to go and live and stay in the in the lounge where the children can see, why my father is sleeping there? Then he will start, why? I am disciplining my wife. They don't understand that. That's not good. On the bed. So I know it's going to be very, very struggling for the name, but be patient. Just about 10 days, she will ask for it. <laughs> and then you sit here, sorry. You remember what you've done? I'm teaching you that this is what should be doing this. But be careful. <laughs> so it's very hard. I know it's very hard. Sometimes the women using this actually weapon against the men, which you call it sexual harassment. It's not allowed. <laughs> A woman, she's not allowed to make a sexual harassment for her husband. Husband is allowed to do that in case if she is not correct on the deen. She's not doing something correct. After he had, you know, used all types of methods, talking to her, dressing her, teaching her, she doesn't understand, she doesn't listen, then you go to this, which is detach yourself from the bed. And then if she doesn't, then you go to the discipline. Prophet Sallam, he said, the most noble in his manners, the most noble in his iman, the most so perfect in his iman is the one who is the most noble in his manners. And the most noble in manners is the one who is the most noble to his wife. Prophet said, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. Wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you, the best of you is the best for his family, not just for the, you know, the friends of his. And as soon as the friends go, he's like a beast on his wife. Huh? Well, Sheikh Abdul Razak, also brother, he told us a story. I've heard it from him, from the YouTube. So uh, <laughs> he says that one day, one of those dua, the way he takes talks, you know, and he's known. So they decided to take the Sheikh for a trip, picnic. So they said, come we bring our wives, Sheikh. We bring your family as well. So he brought his family. So the women with the women, the men with the men, so the wives of the other students, <clears throat> they said to the wife of the sheikh, oh, we wish we had a husband like your husband. <coughs> MashaAllah, sheikh, knowledgeable, so nice and so kind. She said, who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? She didn't recognize him with these characteristics. She knows him that is to be a, a beast, beating her up, no good, only shows off when he's in front of his people. Or when he comes with it, he locks the door, we call it hell broke loose. loose. Allah Mustafa. I'm talking about facts, Allah facts. Because I, I'm a person in a in a position where I listen to some of the problems they come to me. I would be amazed that the wife she comes, woman she holds that she phones or something, and her husband is known. No, inshallah, is no student of knowledge or something, but he is like a beast into the house. No fear of Allah. Don't you think that sometimes one day your news is gonna be leaked out? People are going to know about you. Allah make a scandal of you. Akmarul iman al mumina iman. The most perfect in his iman, ahsanuhum khuluq. The best in their manners. Khiyarukum khiyarukum li ahli. Khiyarukum khiyarukum. Best of you is khiyar to his family.
from the good manners as well to cuddle your wife. Prophet Sallallahu he said to Jaira, did you get married? He said, yes, Messenger of Allah. Virgin or a non-virgin? He said, <coughs> non-virgin. It was a reason because <coughs> he was young. He married non-virgin. He was <coughs> basically, his father left him seven, seven, <coughs> seven sisters, seven daughters of the father of his father, seven sisters, or nine even, some orations. And he was martyred in the, the Battle of Uhud. So he had, he said to the Prophet, I wanted to bring somebody who's got experience to look after them, not somebody who's just young and then there'll be, you know, no sort of matching and there will be competition between them. So he said to him, oh, <coughs> a virgin, could have been a virgin. And then he said, tula'ibuka, or tula'ibuka wa that you cuddle her, she cuddles you, you make it smile, she makes you smile. SubhanAllah. Sa'd al when he was ill, Prophet ﷺ came pays him a visit. So he says to him, verily, any nafaqa expenditure that you give for the sake of Allah, you're going to be rewarded for. Any expenditure. Then he said, hatta al even the mosul. You know that mosul? The most of the food, you put it in the wife, in the mother wife, you will be getting a reward for it. In another narration, tarfa'u luqma ila zawjatik. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, if you have more than one wife, you have to be just. Prophet of Allah, he said, any person who's got more than one wife, he's not just between them, then on the day of Raza Rashid, he's going to come with his one cheek tilted to one side. So everybody will know, oh, you had more than one wife. Scandal for you. And that's why you were un unjust between them. And that's why, on top of your punishment, you'll be as well scandal for you. You're going to be tilted to one side. When they become mothers, Islam honors them. So he said, from the best of the acts is being righteous to the mothers, which is the females. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he asked the Messenger, so said, the Messenger of Allah, what is the best of acts, which is the best in this uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, As-salatu ala waqtiha. Praying on its time. Praying on time is the best. Thumma ay, then what? Then he said, birrul walidayn. And that is to be righteous to your parents, including the mother, father. Then ay, then al-jihad fi sabillah. Making jihad in sabillah. So jihad in sabillah becomes after being dutiful to your parents. Abdullah ibn Amr, radiyallahu an, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, he said, a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Messenger of Allah, give me permission to make jihad. He said, do you have parents or Allah? He said, yes, Messenger of Allah. Then make jihad with them. Make jihad by being nice to them. Make jihad to be available whenever they need you. Go to them. And this is called jihad naql al-da'wah, not jihad daf al meaning there's two types of jihad. Jihad, which is to make Islam to go to another place, or the jihad of defending Muslim. Jihad of defending Muslim, no, it will be taking priority. You have to defend it. But if it comes to the other jihad, which is the nasila jihad, it's not the compulsory one. That one, being dutiful to your parents, is more rewardable than going for this jihad. Also, Allah's messenger said to us that the anger of Allah is with the anger of the mother. And the pleasure of Allah is the pleasure of the mother. Look at this. So the pleasure to be, to be pleasing your mother that you please Allah and it will be a reason for you to enter paradise. The hadith, which is seek Jannah underneath her feet. Seek Jannah where? Underneath her feet. That means where? That means by serving. It's not the one to dig under the feet of mother. Jannah is there. It means that serve your mother. Be with your mother. Read the Rabb. Prophet said, the pleasure of Allah called Ma'a Ridha al It is with the pleasure of the parents. You please your parents, you're pleasing Allah. وَسَخَطُ الرَّبْ فِي سَخَطِ الْوَالِدِ And to displease Allah, to have the wrath of Allah, is when you displease your parents. Prophet Sallallahu when he ascended the pulpit, when he said, may his nose be smeared three times in dust, means me what a loser he is. May his nose be smeared in dust three times. Who is he, Messenger of What is this person? He said, the one who lives to see his parents, both of them, or one of them, Yet he does not secure himself a pardoning. That means paradise. Your parents are alive. 
and you still did not gain paradise through being righteous to them, what a loser you are. Also, Prophet Sallam, he had prompted the children. Allah is prompting you to be kind, to look after your mother twice. Then he said your father. So your mothers twice, then your father. Then he will also prompt you to be kind to those who are close than the one who's close. So mother twice, then the father, then the one who are from the relatives. Also the Prophet ﷺ, he said to that man, he came to him, Messenger of Allah, who is the best to have my best friendship, companion? He said, your mother. That's the one who closest to you, your mother. Then who? Your mother. Then who? Your mother. So if righteousness are to be some parts, three parts only for the mother. Dutifulness, three of it, three times, or three likes of it, okay, three, triple of it is for the mother. Then he said to your father. Why not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا Or, another ayah, إِحْسَانَ وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا We have prompted the man to be kind to his parents. حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا She, his mother, she, when she was pregnant, she was pregnant in pain. And when she delivered him, she was delivered him in pain. So a man, he was holding his mother, top of his shoulder, and he was rotating around the Kaaba. Sees Abdullah ibn Abbas. Ya ibn Abbas. Oh, ibn Abbas. Do you think I have actually settled my account regarding my mother? Did I pay her sort of favors upon me? Not even a single ah of hers. You see, ah means that when she delivered him, she did not of ahs. Not even an ah, the pain sort of sign. Not even one of that, you have paid it back. He was cutting his mother and making circumambulation in the heat. Just to make her able to make the tawaf, subhanAllah. <sighs> Prophet Sallam, lastly, he sets up the best of examples for us to follow regarding his gentleness with the women. So, with his daughters. Aisha, she says, Fatima, I've never seen anyone who is closest to the Prophet of Allah in the way he speak than Fatima. The daughter of his. And as soon as she comes, the Prophet Sallam will get up for her and he will kiss her. On her head, and he will respect her and he will take her hand and he will make it to sit where he sits. Is it the Prophet of Allah doing that to his little daughter, Fatima? You know, Fatima, she died only when she's 25 years old. So that must have been she's really young when the Prophet was doing that to her. One daughter of the Prophet Sallam, she died in his hand. So he had actually carried her in sort of gentleness and mercy and all of that. And then Um Ayman, the one who took up, uh, looked after the Prophet Sallam, an old woman, she just screamed, crying. So the Prophet Sallam said, are you crying in the presence of the Prophet of Allah? He said, well, I saw you crying, Messenger of Allah. I'm just crying, just like you, just like shedding tears. He said, verily, this cry is only a mercy. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm not really crying because I want to cry, but it's, it's a mercy. Allah Azza wa puts it in the hearts of the believers. And if the person had uh, been afflicted with such a thing, his you know beloved person is being taken away, yet he's patient and he is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the best. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to Anas, he was next to the grave where his daughters to be buried. We saw his eyes as well shedding tears. As for the Prophet of Allah, gentleness with his wives, a plenty of examples to take one or two. Prophet of Allah, he said, khayrukum, khayrukum Wana khayrukum Best of you is to be for his family. Twice, I am the best for my family. Prophet of Allah, when she asked, she was asked about him, how is the Prophet of Allah in the house? What does he do? So she said, like a human being, basharun min al-bashar. What he does? For example, he patches his clothes. It's got something like a hole or something. He patches it. But these days they make a hole in clothes. Allah must down. He patches his clothes. And also he would milk his sheep. And also he would serve himself. So he's just like a human being. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had cuddled Aisha a number of times. One of them is that he raised her. When she was 
young as soon as she before she, when she got married, she erased her. Prophet Allah lost. But later on, when she got really a bit sort of chubby, radiallahu anha wa a bit, so she put more meat. She he raised her, and he won. He won. So he said, "This for that." <laughs> I mean, this is for that. You lost the last time. I lost the last time. Now I won. <laughs> so he was like cuddling the Aisha radiallahu anha. And Prophet of Allah, he said, "Verily, I always he was promptly the believers. I ask you strongly regarding you, those two weak categories of people. What are they? The orphan." And the women. Then he emphasizes or emphasis on the women. Take care, look after the women. By this, Alhamdulillah, we came to the end of our topic. Our Isha prayer is going to come earlier next week. Yeah, Ustaz Siraj? No, nobody knows. No, you don't know. So, can I say it's going to stay? Still half it. So, next week's half it. So, we're going to still end after Isha still. And I'm sure that Isha is going to come at uh, earliest, maybe half past seven. Yes? So when it comes up, seven minutes will become after Isha. Okay? It says after Isha. Jazakumullah khair. Any other questions, please? Fadl. Two in one here. Uh, I, I can't hear you with this. Two in one. One answer. Question three in one. Is it uh, because it was reported in Islam, um, obviously, from Aisha outside when they, when they had the Islam from Aisha? No. The Prophet Muhammad Islam from Aisha. Hub Aisha. When they uh, had a sprint, so that means that if if you're outside and your wife will do something good, are you can, can, to can hug you can 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 you 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 can 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 so can you as well uh, make more than that as well, put on the road? And... Okay. I would say your shyness and her shyness would not allow such a thing. What did you say, Aisha? What is Aisha coming here? You, you, uh, you said that the race outside. Yeah, the race. The race uh, it doesn't mean the race, the race in front of the men. Who said that? He raced. It could be, you know, there's desert there. Lots of empty space. It's not to raise your wife in front of the people in the market here. <laughs> you raise it when there's nobody there. <clears throat> and if it's allowed to raise in front of the men, then we will tell the women better than that to do in the side to go and run. This is very bad, isn't it? We tell them not to do that. Unless, number one, there is nobody there except for females. And number two, there's no cameras, which is impossible. So that's why women between the two green sample, you know, that which is the upper high school, they're not allowed to run. And I think I haven't seen yet a woman running there. Okay, so they were, and her shyness, and her modesty should not really allow her to do that. Because, you know, when she moves, all, all the women are fitna for the men. They're fitna. Now, so who said that when they race each other, they are racing each other, you know, like a, a, a race sort of, <laughs> a racing uh, place? No, no. <laughs> okay, can I, for example, it's a quick question. So, the procedure that the Prophet <coughs> told us about, this is the woman, which is to, first of all, Mawaila, to <coughs> remind her. Number two, the bed, separation, sexual intercourse. Number three, <coughs> is the discipline with the hand, as we said, the tapping, whatever you want to call it. Can we jump? No, we can't jump from the beginning, go to the last stage. Okay, we can't jump. But the mawida is very important, but I could jump to the third one. If the second one, I can't take it. Because some of the men, they can't really take that. It's actually a weapon it's a more of a weapon in the hands of a woman than the man to be uh, away, especially in such an environment. He wants his wife, as I say all the time, 24 7. He had to have his wife in his pocket wherever he goes because of the fitna. Allah Musta'an. So, uh, but the first one has to admonish. How, how can you discipline somebody like this? Why are you doing this? Because they, I, you haven't told me. You have to tell me to teach me. Now, brother. <coughs> 
So did that boy, you mean that he had left the prayer? So can we do the same thing? And Daisha? Okay, Daisha prayer is a prayer which is not supposed to be a prayer to be recited where uh, yani, Prophet of Allah said, said duha, So equivalent to the basically to num two, two things. Number of verses <coughs> depending upon which verses you're reading. So if you read from the Baqarah portion, it's no problem. But Mu'adi was carrying an old Baqarah. Number two, the person who recites, how fast he is and how slow he is. Some of the reciters, when they recite, for example, just Qulhu Wallahu Ahad, they take as much as a person who recites, for example, I'm not going to exaggerate, like what Duha, what Layli the Sajjah, or even more than that. So depending upon the rate. Some of them, they recite, Masha Allah, and the last time we had uh, our Qari here, Sharif, <clears throat> And he was reciting. He had recited in the first surah, I remember, Surah Al Mulk, with a recitation. And then another surah, I can't remember the sixth surah. But he recited the full surah in one rakah. If you do that in my country, they'll take you they'll kick you out. Even if you recited half of the half of the mulk in two rakah, ah, that's okay. Half of the mulk, half of it. You divide the half a quarter and a quarter of the second half, that's so acceptable. All the mulk in the whole of Isha, that's too much for them. But he decided two surahs, actually. So let's look at another one. But he was, mashallah, so swift. I enjoyed it. I told him, mashallah, so swift. And hey, the people here got used to it. This is okay. So it depends upon how fast. And he was, mashallah, very fast. Now, nah, uh, you, you asked you ask a question. I don't know. Now. Yes, just like a sort of no. It's about portion sort of no, not all sort of no. Sort of no is a long one. No, ah, so no, no, no. How is he? Yes, sort of no, sort of no. I think all of it. Yes, is it? Subhanallah. Finished all of it. Surah no. Wallah, surah no. We divided it between Maghrib and Isha in our country. Tell you what, surah al-Qiyamah in the whole eight rakahs of Taraweeh. I prayed it. I was behind a person in one of the villages. He recited Surah Al Qiyam. Surah Al Qiyam is only one page. Right? Wallahi, he recited that in the whole eight track after all. Wallah. I was there. Nobody's telling me. <laughs> what do you mean slow? He's going to be reciting two verses. And then in the second rakah, I will repeat it. And the second verse, he recited in the first rakah. Because he can't do this. Eight rakah, I'm talking about, including Isha as well. She did some, he recites two verses in the first rakah. Second rakah will recite two verses, but one verse has been repeated from the first rakah. She did some. Allah will recite. Did you ask a question? Father. I asked for a long time, but I said, okay, there's a difference of opinion. It's like a 50 pounds, 50 pounds, and one pound. Fifth opinion? Yeah. So one says halal, one says haram. Say, um, maybe that one says, so no, what this? Uh, <coughs> Let's say, for example, the face. Yeah. Okay, that's the one is that you're asking about. <laughs> one of them, yeah, one of them. But the veil. They could have a difference of opinion, but if the husband said, I want it, it becomes compulsory. She could say that I'm still convinced it's not compulsory. Yes, but I'm commanding it becomes compulsory. Do you understand that? Yeah. So the wife, she has two things here. If she has no wali amr to ask, and the father is not asking her, or the husband is not asking her, and she adopts the opinion, it is sunnah, okay, it's not compulsory, she has, she has, she has to do that. But if she has her father said, her, you do it, you have to do it. Because the wali amr, the husband has to do it. If she's divorced, got nobody there, she's a boss of herself. What about an instance where it's actually the opposite? Compared to something like that, where it's opposite? Okay, that's a good one. So the wife, she wants to cover. And the husband is telling her, I believe it is what? Sunnah. That's a very, very good question. If she believes it's compulsory, she's not allowed to take it up. She has to be convinced. It becomes, it's becoming a sin. 
But if she believes it is a sunnah, and yet she wants to cover, and her husband told her not to cover, she should not cover. Because the husband is allowed to prevent the woman to make the nafila. So if she wants to fast the nafila, she has to ask what? Her husband permission. Because he wants to satisfy himself. What about if her husband is not present? The hadith says, وَزَوْجُهَا شَاهِدْ If her husband is present, she had to ask him. What about if he's not present? Well, if she knows that he doesn't like her to fast, he would ask us not to fast even voluntarily. Maybe because he wants her to be chubby. And the fast is making him about thinner and thinner and thinner. She might disappear. <laughs> this is not a joke. So her, the fast is affecting her, you know, her body. So he's, I don't want him to fast except for the obligatory. He's got the right to do that. Now, you like that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and this is our from our fiqh, Sheikh Al Albani. Because the hadith, which is, وزوجها شاهد, this has got nothing to do with the meaning. It's usually, uh, even if you're not his shahid, he has to be asked. And that's a very good, you know, it's her husband. He wants it to be, you know, to be, mashallah, filled. Father. Yeah, no problem. She had this. This is Bil Maruf. So the puzzle, the question is that I had my two children, one reached the same age and I bought them a car, the same child grow up, the same age, but I didn't have the money to bring him the same car. So I'll do this. I will ask help from the children to ask me, the one I gave him the car, can you help me as well? But it's not incumbent upon you. You have to do it according to your ability. No, no, no. Student loan is not allowed. Student loan is not allowed. That's riba, Ikhwan. And we talked about it in a session called riba. I need to have a last question, Ikhwan, from this year. And it's 1003. Tfadal ya Faisal. Sheikh, may I ask a salah question? Is that okay? Quickly. Oh, Sheikh, if I'm praying and I'm not sure how many raka I have prayed, and then I have a debate in my mind, and then I became certain, you said for that little bit of uncertainty, sujood as saha was required. Is that sujood as saha? Is it wajib or sunnah for that moment of uncertainty? Now, basically, the sahu. Prophet ﷺ, he said, we don't really take it wajib. Prophet of Allah, he said, he who had a doubt, then he had run it through his mind, this uncertainty. Then he arrived to a conclusion. Prophet of Allah, he said, for that. Now, is it compulsory or not? That's a debatable issue. Okay, so we will do what the Prophet of Allah told us to do. <coughs> okay, it is not. But we'll say if it's a compulsory prayer, we'll make it compulsory. If it's a voluntary prayer, it's a voluntary uh, uh, prostration. Okay? So, uh, uh, and, and, and the sujood is sahu is to be uh, whether before or after the salutation, it doesn't matter. But in this case, the sunnah is to do it actually after the salutation. So you salutate, then you do two sajjah sahu, then you salutate again. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Hanakallah